If you post a photo, uh, Scott, and you, you had uh, 100 comments on that photo, and 99 of the comments are positive, and one of the comments is negative, <laughs> where does your attention go? To the negative one. <laughs> and, and I was just telling time. I yeah. was just do you think you're the earlier I blow the whole building up? <laughs> you blow the whole building up? The algorithm sees <laughs> yeah. that your attention goes to the negative one. And so then it says, ah, oh, that's what gets them. So then you get more and more negativity. Oh, yep. wow, really? Yeah, that's how it works. That's because crazy. it's looking for patterns, right? So these things, you know, they're, they're not looking for what's good. They don't know what's good. It's just a machine, just like in the film, The Social Dilemma. You know, there's the three AIs behind, you know, yeah, like twisting their mustache, yeah. trying to figure out what's that perfect thing I can show you. Flick your finger and then it activates a supercomputer. Mm -hmm. You know, you flick your finger up. It's like, it's going to show you the next thing. It calls in the mm -hmm. supercomputer. All those AIs figure out, okay, we've got this little avatar voodoo doll predictive model of you. And then we'll prick you with a million different pricks to figure out, okay, if we showed you this thing versus if we showed you this thing, this negative comment or this other photo of this other teenage girl who has this particular, you know, look who, who you'll be most jealous of, those are the mm -hmm. kinds of things that tend to get your attention. Now, the algorithm doesn't know that that's another girl that'll get, that makes you feel jealous or the algorithm doesn't know that that's another thing that makes you angry. All it knows is that it works. It's sort of like if you're yes. driving down the freeway, right, and, and um, if, if according to the same logic, um, when everyone's attention looks at the car crash on the side of the road, the algorithm says, oh my God, everyone wants car crashes. Let's just feed you infinite car crashes Whoa. because that's where everyone's attention goes. And so when we use what gets our attention as a proxy for what we value, that's a huge philosophical mistake, right? Because what, what our brains, what our monkey brains and limbic brains and lizard brains look at is not the same as what we as a society value. But when you make that one mistake, I've joked in the past, like if we were to write a book, we, we would call it like the, you know, the, t the title would be The Click and the subtitle would be The Mistake That Turned the World Upside Down. Because the notion of that what mm. we click on is the same as what we want or what we value. That one mistake fed through the entire logic of, you know, now trillion dollar companies who on a daily basis govern what three billion people are seeing, thinking, believing and doing. That one mistake that what we click is what we want has turned the world literally upside down because it was not really understanding what we really value or our insecurities or that negative comment gets all the attention, which by the way, you know, when you turn off the phone, right? And you look away, you, you turn, after you see that negative comment, you turn off the phone. Do you think your mind forgets the negative comment, right? Or does it even think about the 99, po you got 99 positive comments that you could be, your mind could be looping on that, but instead our brains have evolutionary heritage that says it's more um, important for our mind to sort for the things that might be a threat to us. Oh, the, the community, the tribe, they don't approve of us. Mm -hmm. So I got to pay attention to that negative comment. And so you now have like this hundreds of millions of teenagers who are then, they turn their phone off. Now they're just with their friends, but their mind is still looping on, I can't believe that that girl said that thing to me, right? And now we've just preoccupied a whole generation with, with noise. Right? I mean, this is not meaningful signal. This was all puppeteered by Instagram. And I say this not believing that um, you know, my friends in college uh, at Stanford actually started Instagram. I know the guys who, who made it. I was in classes with them. You know, we're, we're, we still know each other. Mm -hmm. And they didn't intend for any of this to happen. It's really just this business model that turned into a Frankenstein that's kind of out of control. And, and the whole point is we can fix it, right? We, we don't have to live in this world. We can, we, we can get out of this. And it's not that we have to put all of technology back in the bottle. We have to take this business model that we like bolted into this whole infrastructure and subtract that from the way that it, you know, the way that it relates to us. Wow. It seems, it seems like it's only getting larger though, right? Which aspect? The, the business model of like how a, a advertising works on, online. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, one of the things is since the companies make their money by making people feel negative emotions, um, they've ended up without any friends. I've really been struck. A lot of my um, contact with the government during the Trump years was Republican senators calling saying, oh my God, Facebook and Google are like this leftist plot. And I'm like, no, <laughs> it's just that they've made you they made you paranoid if anything they're helping your guy you know but the thing is they've made everybody so paranoid and so unhappy that i think they've destroyed their own potential friends so i think what you're going to start to see in the next few years is that when there's pressure on them especially from the european regulators but also in the u.s nobody's going to stand up for them even like big tobacco had friends you know uh these yeah, guys okay. so, so i think something something's going to happen i don't know what you know uh it's going to be interesting 
be, but I, I, I think there's going to be some action. And at some point, there's enough people at the companies who get it, who understand that just pressure from within, I think, is going to have an effect and have a change. Uh, yeah, cool. There's another side to it, too. Like, let's say you're an investor in Google or Facebook, and you've been writing this thing. You're saying, wow, my stock's gone up. I'm happy. But then you look at it and say, this is really weird. You have this giant company that has one trick. It's like a one-trick pony. And if anything happened to that one trick, they fall apart. And they're going to start to get pressure from the business side to say, oh, come on, guys. You've got to have other businesses. You can't just live with this. And mm. you know, I think that's another factor. So I'm actually optimistic there'll be a change. I think the real question is, will there be a change in time? Will there be a change in time to deal with the climate change? Will there be a change in time to deal with public health? Will there be a change in time to deal with the global resurgence of tribalism and racism that has come about because of the algorithm? Those are the big three damages, I would say. And then, well, there's a fourth one, which is the concentration of wealth that's unsustainable that happens from it. Um, and so the question is like, can the changes happen fast enough to make an impact on all of those things? And that's where the optimism kind of gets challenging. But uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So where I am in California, the late sun is hitting the window, and we're a little later than I thought. So you're going to see the dram dramatic light and shadows <laughs> hitting the side to once again increase the so, drop. So, so worst case scenario, nothing changes. What what what, is, what does that mean? What do you like? Nothing changes. We just continue down this road where we are. Extinction. Wow. I mean, really, seriously, I don't think humanity survives this unchanged. I, I think to make that more clear, and I, I know that that might sound, um, uh, you know, extreme you for a lot of listeners, right? But I, 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 let's let's actually break down why 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 that would be the case, right? And I, and I share Jaron's view about please. how existential this is, right? I mean, I say this with tremendous concern. I mean, I feel like Jaron and I have been in com we've been in conversation for for years about this, and I used to tell him I, we, I just lose sleep. I mean, it's a very hard thing to look at every day and say, okay, every day that this, I, I pull this crank on this machine called Facebook and I let it do what it's doing and the Twitter mm -hmm. device of this machine, I know there's more people ending up in rabbit holes and conspiracy theories. I know there's more kids who are ending up with depression and suicide. I know there's more attention spans that are being shortened. I know there's more of society hyper-focused on the present, unable to read books or unable to think about the future because that's all profitable for this business model. And you zoom out and say, oh my God, we have these problems like climate change, racism, inequality. What does that depend on? It depends on us being able to see the same reality, the same problems, the same agenda. Okay, these are the things that we really got to fix. And then we have to say, what are we going to do about them? And we have to have a same movie of reality that we've been tracking so we can start to say, okay, let's negotiate. What are we going to do? What, how, what are we, how are we going to solve these problems? And instead, people have profited from getting us to see different movies of reality. Right, mm -hmm. and seeing different visions of each other, um, and and I think that, you know, if you ask people like, what is Black Lives Matter, for example, if you're on the left side of news feeds, you've been seeing all these videos, right, about police brutality and all these things and all this inspiring videos of what's been happening. If you're on the right side of the political spectrum on Twitter, you've just been seeing videos of protesters tearing down statues of people who weren't slaveholders, mm -hmm. and now so now you have to totally different views um, about about what's actually even going on. I have a stat here. Um, let me see if I can pull it up here. Where was it? <laughs> um, That's scary. Oh, here it is. 80% uh, uh, of Trump, Trump voters believe that Black Lives Matter protests were mostly violent, while only 19% of those voting for Bi Biden believe the protests are mostly violent. Now, it's not that they uh, believe different things having seen the same videos. They were mm -hmm. seeing completely different movies of reality, right? Because of the way that these feeds were giving us information. So if you say, hey, we really have some problems we got to solve or climate change, right? As they talk about in the social dilemma, you know, if you typed in climate change is into Google, uh, you would see different results based on where you're from. 